Hello, everybody. Welcome to Turner Classic Movies. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. You have joined us for a big day on TCM. Today is literally our 25th birthday at a ceremony on April 14, 1994, in Times Square. Robert Osborne threw the switch that launched TCM onto the air. Now, in the interest of accuracy, I'm guessing the actual switch was a prop and someone in a television control room pressed a button to put TCM on the air. But when it comes to storytelling, Hollywood seldom lets the details obfuscate the myth, so we're sticking with Robert through the switch and changed television for millions of movie lovers. Robert was surrounded that day by legends of classic Hollywood and early supporters of TCM, director Arthur Hiller, actors Arlene Dahl, Jane Powell, Celeste Holm, and Van Johnson, plus TCM founder Ted Turner. To commemorate the day, each of the four TCM hosts, me, Alicia Malone, Dave Carger, and uh, uh, the other guy. I always forget his name. Ed, Ed something. Eddie, Eddie Muller. I knew it would come to me. Anyway, we're each selecting one movie to introduce that's particularly important to us. Mine is a classic of journalism gone wrong. From 1957, Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis star in Sweet Smell of Success. There's nothing sweet about Sweet Smell of Success. It's a story about the power wielded by Lancaster's character, J.J. Hunsecker. He is a ruthless newspaper gossip columnist based on a real ruthless and unscrupulous gossip columnist, Walter Winchell. Like Winchell, careers all over town and in Hollywood are made or broken by what Hunsecker writes or significantly doesn't write. Curtis plays a press agent, Sidney Falco, who has spent years ingratiating himself, no matter the cost, to Hunsecker so J.J. might bless Sidney's clients with some prime real estate in J.J.'s column. But in Sweet Smell of Success, their relationship is fractured and we witness whether there are any limits to how low each man will go. The story, original story, came from writer Ernest Lehman, whose impressive list of credits includes Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest, Executive Suite, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, plus the screenplays to two of the great musicals of the 1960s, West Side Story and The Sound of Music. For the treacherous world of Sweet Smell of Success, Lehman wrote from experience. During the 1930s, he worked for celebrity press agent Irving Hoffman. Lehman even managed to get a few items placed in Walter Winchell's column. The plan originally was for Lehman to both write and direct the picture, but an illness got in the way, so Lehman had to bow out of directing. When Alexander McKendrick took over, he brought in Clifford Odets to rework the script to give the dialogue a punchier New York vibe. Apparently, Odets did much more than rework it. He reportedly rewrote nearly the entire picture. Whatever its origins, the script dazzles, even 62 years later. One of the finest critics of our day, A.O. Scott of the New York Times, described the dialogue as, quote, a high-toned street vernacular that no real New Yorker has ever spoken, but that every real New Yorker wishes he could. At one point, proudly revealing not only his duplicity, but the compartmentalizing that enables it, J.J. tells Sidney, my right hand hasn't seen my left hand in 30 years. But Lord knows J.J. Hunsecker can read a room. At one point, he sits down with a U.S. senator out on the town with a beautiful young woman and a press agent, Mandy Davis, who claims to be representing the girl. Well, J.J. sees right through the ruse. The girl was clearly with the senator. Everyone knows Manny Davis, sneers Lancaster, except Mrs. Manny Davis. Before we show the movie, a quick note about the role Manhattan plays in the picture. McKendrick and the great cinematographer James Wong Howe developed a plan to start scenes outside, then move indoors with the characters, all part of creating the sense that the vast verticality of New York was crushing the souls living in the city. Remember, this was Times Square in 1957, not 2019. It was gritty, dirty, a little dangerous. There was no ESPN zone, no Disney store, and good luck finding mozzarella sticks. From 1957, this is Sweet Smell of Success. Sweet Smell of Success was co-produced by Hecht Hill Lancaster, Burt Lancaster's production company. Tony Curtis's company, Kurt Lee, formed with his wife at the time, Janet Lee, was also involved, but Lancaster was in charge, and given that he was both a producer and the star, he clashed with director Alexander McKendrick. Originally, Lancaster considered Orson Welles to play J.J. Hunsecker before deciding to cast himself. When he did that, reportedly a little of Hunsecker's, let's call it confidence, 
bled into Lancaster. He challenged McKendrick consistently. McKendrick said he was, quote, scared stiff throughout the production. Lancaster even went so far as to deliver a final cut of the film without McKendrick's input and without McKendrick's ending. But to Lancaster's eternal credit, he realized his mistake and brought McKendrick back to fix the picture's ending. McKendrick later called the entire process a valuable experience. Quote, the moments of your greatest fear are also the moments you look back on as your greatest thrill, McKendrick said. The danger is an aphrodisiac. It must be. Coming up, the first film we ever showed on TCM exactly 25 years ago, accompanied by Robert Osborne's very first introduction.